for the purposes of this talk, uh, you're all part of a, uh, of a law firm that serves uh, corporate uh, clients, okay? And so a hundred of you are partners, and you can in your own mind decide if you're a partner or not. Uh, there's a few millennial new partners, and they came up with a good idea, okay? So that's the hypothetical that we're going to deal with here. And I want to talk about this 20 and 10 box. And uh, this should be good news because one of our millennial partners, uh, we just made her a partner or him a partner, and, uh, and they have this idea, they came up with this, this new way of doing things that doubles lawyer productivity. So what it used to take us 20 hours of, of our time to do as lawyers, we can now do in 10. Uh, can I see if, is the, thir is the firm enthusiastic about this breakthrough? Do we like it? Do we like it? Oh, we like it. So in this 20 and 10 box, it's got a price tag associated. Remember I said we had, we had uh, 100 partners? So it's going to cost us two point, and, and we've looked over the plans, and we've talked about it, and we've uh, conferred with our kind of millennial partner invest, in, in, inventors, and it looks like it's pretty credible. It looks like it's going to work. As a matter of fact, we'll stipulate that it will work, but it's going to cost us uh, $2.5 million, you know, our firm, and it's going to take 12 months to build. Are we, are we scared by that at all? And we want to go ahead and do it? I mean, this is a huge breakthrough, right? So uh, here's, the, here's the difficult thing here. Uh, 20 and 10. How are we going to price the work? Because, because if we worked 40, if we built 40 last week, or we built 30 last week, uh, uh, now, now we're going to be done halfway through the week. And so because we're going to be twice as productive. So how are we going to price it? And so I have some, I have some just suggestions on how to potentially price this. One, uh, one option would be the client pays for 10 hours with a no increase in hourly rates. We don't like that, do we? Remember, remember we're the capitalists in this hypothetical. We don't like this because we just spent $2.5 million, and it means that if we go forward with this model, uh, we've just cut our revenue in half. So that kind of stinks, right? So we, we ha I started this hypothetical with the great news of a 20 and 10 box, uh, but we've cut our revenue in half. So this pricing model is not going to work, Correct. It will not work. Okay, here's a pricing model. The client pays for 10 hours. The firm doubles its rate from $400 to $800 an hour. Uh, uh, the firm likes it, but do you think we can sell it to our clients? The hours are twice as good as they used to be and twice as much. Okay, so there has to, we have to meet somewhere in the, uh, in the middle here. So we can share the benefits. And so one of them would be uh, the firm and the clients split the benefits 50-50, or the other thing is, would be, you know, we'll give it to you. Well, you can have this benefit, but we need a lot more volume to kind of make up with it because our lawyers are going to be idle about half the time. And so just backfill us, give us more uh, work. And so we can make it up that way. That way we can pay the $2.5 million. And do you think that this, this conversation is going to go well with our client? Do you think we're going to strike a deal? It's going to be difficult. And so this is a topic uh, called complex uh, technical sales. So you have to educate your client. This is really in your best interest. We've done it this way, but we want to switch over to this way, and it's actually going to be in your benefit. And so remember when I said it cost $2.5 million to build this? That wasn't counting having to hire the salespeople to sell this. And the sales cycle could take one, two, or three years. And how much are they going to cost? And are we even going to be able to close the deal? Even if this 20 and 10 box did exist, we have to be able to prove it to the client. Now, it would help if we had a client that wanted to go on this journey with us and believed in their mind uh, that uh, there was, in fact, this, this better way of doing things where you could get all three better, faster, uh, and uh, more timely uh, or less expensive. So this is the world of complex technical sales, and it really kind of throws a monkey wrench in the good news that we started this hypothetical uh, with. Now, this is what I call the last mile problem, and I got this metaphor from my friend Dan Katz, who's a professor at Chicago Kent uh, College of Law, and he, and he claimed that, in fact, we had this very difficult last mile problem. And this last mile problem comes from the telecom industry, where we had this ability to have this information superhighway, but we couldn't get it all the way to our house because we were constrained by this copper wire that was the old telephone line. And the engineers got together and they figured out more, ever more ingenious ways to shove more data through those copper lines. And they said, oh, we could use this coaxial cable. And then eventually we have new technology. We could pump more data through that one. Eventually we have cellular technology and, and, and optical fiber. It's not perfectly solved yet, but, but to, to a large extent, we have massive amounts of data at our fingertips been solved over the last 20 years uh, through a technical problem solved by engineers. 
I think we have the same kind of last mile problem. We have the technology process data to solve the legal profession's cost problem, but we lack a business model uh, to actually deliver these things. And so the last mile problem for the legal profession is not technological, it's this business model problem where we lack this ability to reliably reward higher lawyer productivity. If in fact we do this, uh, and we actually do it, and we're still stuck on our metric of rewarding people by hours of production and paying people on their hours of production, we create this revenue uh, problem that's very, very serious because that's well ingrained in our psyche. To show you that this is something that we really do need to solve and will, I think, be solved over the next uh, 20 years, but it may, it may take just as long as it did for the telecom industry with their technical last mile problem. Just imagine from 1975 until 2015, this is the pages in the Code of Federal, federal Regulations. Every year that uh, gets published and it's doubled in size, so we have twice as many regulations. But the regulations don't just move up in a kind of arithmetic way, they interact with each other and the complexity becomes geometrically more complex. And this creates a lot of difficulty for lawyers, especially if we don't have the quantum leaps in productivity to keep up with the complexity that we're being asked to handle. Here's another proxy for, uh, for uh, complexity. This comes from the, uh, the federal tax reporter. Look at the page counts in the tax code going back to 1950 up until 2010. And get, again, tremendous complexity, and the lawyers are asked to cut through this, and it's very difficult to do unless we have these quantum leaps in productivity. We're not keeping pace with the complexity. Here's $1,000. Everybody can see the $1,000, right? Okay, so we need $1,000 to resolve one unit of legal complexity. Uh, one difficulty is we have to define what a unit of complexity is, but I, I think that if there was a unit of complexity, we'll just say whatever, however we defined it, there it is, one unit of complexity, it costs $1,000 uh, to resolve it. So I'm going to walk you through another hypothetical to demonstrate to you the difficulty of the last mile uh, problem. Acme Corporation, a $2 billion global widget company. Revenues are going up 5% a year. We love this client. Uh, they're doing just uh, uh, fine. They're, they're cranking out their widgets. Uh, they spend about $10 million a year in their legal budget. Uh, their budget goes up 5% a year. Why? And here, your revenues go up 5%. Uh, we could probably increase legal's budget up 5%. We're in different countries. We've got different technologies. That seems to make sense. What gets difficult is if actually the, uh, the level of complexity goes up faster than 5%. So in the purposes of this particular hypothetical, we've got 10,000 units of legal complexity. We're now paying $1,000 per unit of complexity to resolve them, which adds up to our $10 million legal budget. But the problem is complexity is going up 10% a year, where revenues are going up 5% a year. And so I'm just going to run you the math to show you how difficult a problem this creates for corporate uh, uh, clients. Okay, so here is just a simple budget. This is Acme's legal budget, legal complexity. Here's their growth. If they're spending $10 million uh, a year, uh, or $10 million a year on their legal budget, it's going to go up to $12 million just because the company is growing and they're willing to allocate uh, a pro rata share of their, of their revenue increase to uh, legal to stay in compliance with the law. That's perfectly fine with all the uh, C-suite spokes. The problem is, I laid out this particular hypothetical, is this is the actual cost that they're going to incur uh, because legal complexity is rising faster than a unit of revenue. And so you can see that, in fact, they're going to need almost $15 million if they don't find some sort of significant leap forward in productivity. So their budget, they're going to blow their budget. And so, and there's a lot of pressure from the C-suite to drive that line down here. Now, if you drive that line down and you don't have a way to improve productivity, you're just asking people to take pay cuts. Maybe there's some labor arbitrage, maybe you can move it to lower uh, cost people, and I would posit that that's largely what corporate America has done up until now. We really do need this increase in productivity. This is what's causing a lot of the poisonous environment between client and law firm uh, these days. Not to mention, Prior to this, law firms did get very, very wealthy, and they're reluctant to give up those gains. Uh, but in fact, uh, the, uh, uh, this is a dynamic that, that the clients are pushing back on here, and we really do need ways to increase the, kind of create a win-win for both sides of the equation. And the clients really can't avoid this. So one way to think about this is, is if we just, if we want to stay on this prior line here, if we want to stay on that black line, all we need to do is figure out a way to increase the throughput of complexity. Instead of $1,000, we need to eventually, over a five-year period, drop it down to 830. So if we're going to have manage a unit of complexity, uh, we've got to drop it down to $830 or $830 per unit. That's what we're going to need to do to stay within budget. Otherwise, the C-suite folks are going to get really at us. 
So wouldn't it be great to have a 20 and 10 box to deal with this problem? There would be a lot left over for the law firm if, in fact, we were able to materialize this 20 and 10 bucks. The problem is we didn't know how to price it. We didn't know how to sell it to the corporate uh, client. Maybe the client doesn't even realize they need a 20 and 10 box uh, to begin with. But in fact, I would posit that almost every legal department that's, that's, that's complaining about cost is because they're trying to buy legal services, but the legal services aren't able to increase their throughput of complexity. And it's being misframed by the client is the, the hourly rates are too high, but in fact, we've got this bottleneck on productivity. To resolve this uh, thing here, we need to be able to drop down to $830, uh, so we need to shave that off here. Now, to give you an example of how, how realistic and how we come to expect this, we paid, we paid what? How much for a computer, a laptop, uh, 20 years ago? 2,500 bucks, we can get one now for about 800. I bought three Henderson family cars for $23,000, one in 1997, one in 2003, uh, one in 2014, and the cars are better. And so in almost every dimension of, the, of our economy, we're getting this massive quantum leaps in, in productivity, but yet we're not getting them in law. Not because we don't have the, pro, the, the technology to do it, uh, but because we don't have a way to communicate with one another and resolve this, uh, this last mile uh, problem, which is really a business mile uh, problem. So uh, a little bit of client a a interaction here. And, and, and think about this one. Does the client want a lower hourly rate or let's, I could rephrase the question here. Uh, what's in the client's best interest? A lower hourly rate or more complexity resolved per hour? A or B? 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 I hear some Bs. Anybody want to stick with A? It depends, which is yeah, it depends what? Which is bigger. Which is bigger. Okay, which is, which is better for the law firm? Or the, uh, in this fiscal year, uh, uh, a lower hourly rate will, will solve the problem. Uh, the problem is, is that you're asking people to innovate when you're asking them to take less money at the same time. Just say, hey, I don't know how to deal with it. I just know that my, I'm over budget. Can you take a fee discount? And we're stuck in that loop. But in fact, the, the real difficulty that we're having is we have more complexity that needs to be resolved per hour. But we're not framing it that way. And to a certain extent, we're being asked to think in terms that we were never taught in law school. So to show you uh, the adverse consequences, or at least what happens in the absence of this last mile or this uh, productivity to quantum uh, productivity uh, leap, the legal departments have to solve it someplace or another. And I would posit for the last 20 years, we've been doing the easiest of all possible things, just simple labor arbitrage. We used to send the work to a, to a, a law firm in Chicago, uh, now we're going to keep it in-house. As a matter of fact, we're going to take the people who used to work in the law firm, we're going to hire them to be in-house uh, uh, counsel, and we're going to pay them a salary, and we're going to keep the difference that ordinarily would go uh, to the outside service provider. You can see that this shows uh, the number of in-house lawyers between 1997 and 2016 went up seven and a half times faster than law firms. Law firms are growing at a rate half as fast as government. Now that's probably not a good idea uh, because almost no business is legal core uh, to their business. That's, that's something that typically should be outsourced for cost and quality uh, reasons, yet large corporations have decided to insource these things. Why? Because that's a language they can understand. John used to do it uh, in a law firm in downtown Chicago. We'll just hire John and we'll make John an employee and, and we'll, we'll save that labor arbitrage. But it doesn't solve the fundamental problem of lawyer productivity. So if we go back to the three options. Uh, we can eliminate option number one. We can eliminate option number two. Uh, that means that the solution is going to be option number three. Well, how do we actually get the benefits of option number three? It's going to involve an honest, sophisticated dialogue on value. Uh, I come from Cleveland, Ohio. I was there uh, when, the, uh, when the automotive industry uh, collapsed onto itself. Uh, we were a big three automotive supplier. I did field work at Case Western Reserve in my undergrad. And we went out, we visited uh, with the big three auto suppliers, and we thought, well, you're adopting Kazan, continuous improvement methods like the Japanese supply chain that's kicking your butt. And we found out, no, they weren't. Uh, they were just basically pushing the, the cost of, of cost overruns further down the T1, T2, T3 uh, suppliers, which led to the implosion of the industry. And eventually they, got the, they found uh, the Kazan method, but it took about 25 years to implement. It's all based upon this idea of risk sharing, honest conversations. And so what I would implore, if you're a law firm lawyer or you're an in-house uh, counsel, uh, orchestrate these, uh, these, uh, these conversations with your best clients and, and because that ultimately, the only way we're going to be able to solve this problem is co-creating it through an honest dialogue. We know there's a better way to do this stuff, 
but there's, it's got to be in a way that doesn't attack my margin at the same time, uh, 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 is respectful of your risk and gives you the quality work that you deserve. But it's only going to be solved uh, through an honest uh, dialogue, and that means an investment of time. I know we're busy in these, this day and age here, but you've got to take the time to have this honest conversation to solve that last mile problem and the business model that we're missing. Thank you very much.